So, John, yeah. what was your first um, example of an attorney? And did you immediately say, I want to be an attorney, or did that gradually happen? That's a great question. I think the first ex- encounters with attorneys I had must have been in the movies. It was probably in, you know, A Time to Kill or some Grisham novel adapted for film. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, The Firm. You know, I, I think. Uh, everyone kind of has this sort of pop culture notion of a, of what a lawyer is, but I never identified with them at, at no point as a child did I think I want to be a lawyer. And in fact, every time I distinctly remember growing up, people saying, what do you want to do? What do you want to be when you grow up? And all my friends had an answer. I want to be a vet. I want to be an astronaut. I want to do this. And I was always like, how am I supposed to know? I just got here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I'm still figuring this out. Um, and yet all along, uh, people, you know, I guess starting in high school, uh, my friends would trust me with their secrets. They would come to me when they were in a sticky situation and they'd ask for my advice. Um, and I would keep their secrets and I would give them the best advice I could based on what would be good for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and little did I know it at the time, but that's the essence of the practice of law Yeah, is keeping your client's information confidential and advocating for them and putting their interests ahead of yours uh, as a fiduciary. And so, uh, and as a student in college, I studied philosophy and, and literature. And so words and ideas and logic and making the best argument, that's basically a pre-law track of study. And, and still in law, in uh, undergraduate, I didn't know that I wanted to be a lawyer. Mm. And it really wasn't until, because I was like, I'm a writer and I identified as a writer before anything. Well, that's the third. And I've hey, been writing poetry. I've been, I've been, and, I've been counting your rep. Because hey, you, you're definitely a published author. I say, hey, I'm going to count every time John tries to segue to that. We we are on number three, John. <laughs> I'm just, really, I'm just messing with you though. Already, but, but, yeah, we on number three. But I but I like that. I like that. But yeah. go ahead. Okay, so uh, all right, so you saw yourself. Yeah, as I mean, writer. words are words are our tool as attorneys. We move words around, and they take on all sorts of special mm-hmm. powers if they're put in the right way. Man, the most um, powerful people of societies throughout history have been the poets. The most powerful. The, the even unacknowledged to, legislators of mankind man, uh, are even, the even today because when, when you look at the broad definition of poetry right to to create mm-hmm. something and to uh, enthusiastically convey it still the most powerful people in the world are poets uh the uh the speech writers the law writer law is poetry to attorneys oh yeah oh yeah it can be. It can also be like reading the back of a cereal box. Hey, just a bad, that's just a bad <laughs> poet, <technical>. man. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. There's no reason it shouldn't be a beautiful, inspiring thing. I mean, read the Declaration of Independence and mm-hmm. tell me if you don't get goosebumps. Absolutely. And that's the cornerstone of the U.S. Constitution. Mm. Um, so, yeah. And, and a well-reasoned judicial opinion ends up ringing for eternity, practically. They get cited and cited because it's just the right way, the best way to put it. And, and so, you know, language is our craft, language and logic, persuasion, um, and we build structures out of words. We build complicated transactions and, and business relationships uh, and investment vehicles and risk sharing vehicles and all sorts of policy instruments are just words on a page. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so the, you know, little did I know as a young man, I was training for a career as an attorney. And I, I didn't know up to my junior year, probably in college that I wanted to be a lawyer. Uh, I still, I still didn't know. Uh, I just wanted to be myself. I wanted to be the best version of myself that I could be. I wanted to have a big impact on the world because I wanted to help people. I wanted to be a light, uh, to, to take what I learned and the things that I was especially good at and to try and help humanity with that. And that's pretty vague. <laughs> and that's why I didn't know. 
Uh, but at some point I realized a PhD wasn't for me. It was too theoretical, too far removed from practice in the real world. Mm -hmm. And that law, a law degree just started to feel right. It started to feel like that's what was missing from my education was how does this society actually resolve disputes between people? How do we manage risk? Um, who's really in charge? <laughs> I mean, what is the purpose of government and how do we make it better? I mean, those big philosophical questions actually drove me to law. All right. So I know you mentioned up into your junior year. Do you remember the moment? Um, I, I remember knowing that I had to have plans for what came next and that I could either start working, uh, go get a job in corporate America, uh, or I could continue my studies. And I knew that I wasn't done learning. Mm. Uh, and I knew that I, that I would not be happy in the nine to five job with one week of paid vacation. Like mm -hmm. the idea of that just makes me feel like I'm in a cage. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, and that there wouldn't be enough um, room for creativity. Uh, and so I, I was at an inflection point where I essentially had to choose between a PhD and a law degree. I, I didn't do pre-med and I don't like blood, so I couldn't be a doctor. I knew that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that's, that's when I chose um, to sit for the LSAT. Uh, 